their support. And I was with John Morris yesterday. He's a good friend of mine. Um, at, I, I love ICR and what they do. He wrote a book called Tracking Those Incredible Dinosaurs, and then he withdrew the book from publication or from sale because one of the footprints that was uh, real clearly a human footprint at first, when it was first discovered, as it eroded away, uh, it grew two more toes and became a three-toed dinosaur footprint. When the footprint was first found, it was about eight inches deep. Are oh, you trying to? I got to the stand so you can get this on film. It was about eight inches deep in the rock. Um, as the erosion destroyed it, okay, when it was first discovered, you could actually see the dermal ridges. That's the toes equivalence of fingerprints. Okay, you could see them very clearly on the toes. This was obviously a footprint. But over the first six months or so, this begins to erode away once it's exposed, you know. You have a catch-22 situation. If you leave the rock and the footprint where it is, it'll be destroyed by weathering. If you take it out, the skeptics will say, how do we know you got it from the river? So, you know, if you take it out and put it in a museum to preserve it, now they don't believe you. And if you leave it there, it gets destroyed and they don't believe you. Because the bottom line is, they don't want to believe. Doesn't matter what you showed them, okay? So... One of the best footprints uh, that everybody came and witnessed, and lots of folks have testified and written affidavits saying, look, I saw this thing, okay, it was there. As it eroded away, it became a dinosaur footprint, three-toed dinosaur track. And they, somebody said, well, maybe the center part that you thought was a human footprint five years ago was actually just the pad on the bottom of a dinosaur footprint. We don't know if they had pads or not, but maybe they did. Okay. Well, another obvious explanation might be the human stepped in the same footprint after the dinosaur was there, the mud squeezed in, obscured the outer toes of the dinosaur. As it eroded away, it exposed those two toes that were there all along. So it was both footprints all along. I talked to John Morris and I said, Dr. John, why did you withdraw your support of this footprints? I've been there three times, I've walked in. He said, listen, I'm not saying they're not real. And I kind of suspect they are. Dwayne Gish, one of the founders of ICR, 82 year old, his wife died two weeks ago, he's a very good friend of mine. He writes lots of books on uh, creation evolution. He has been there numerous times, and he and Henry Morris differ on this. Henry Morris takes the more, and John Morris take the more conservative stance and say, well, we're not really positive, we can't prove it, so let's just not mention it. Dwayne Gish says, look, I've been there, I'm, I'm convinced. So John Morris did not say, we don't believe they're legitimate, he just said we can't be positive, so it's, he's erring on the side of caution. So it would not be correct for you to say, ICR has said they are not footprints. Don't say that. You can say they have withdrawn dogmatic support of this, but they have never said they're not human footprints, okay? And most of the people, many of the people at ICR, Institute for Creation Research, still think they are indeed legitimate footprints. But my point is, it doesn't matter. We don't need to find dinosaur and foot, human footprints together because dinosaurs have always lived with man. They were known as dragons throughout most of history. Uh, and there's probably a few still alive. In the Congo Swamp, for instance, there have been many reports of dinosaurs still living in Likwala Swamp. Uh, Mr. Scotland, uh, who was uh, moving to Arkansas, by the way, he was in the bodybuilder contest, you know, right next to me. Uh, uh, <coughs> William Gibbons is a good friend of mine. He and I wrote a book together called Claws, Jaws, and Dinosaurs. William Gibbons has been to the Congo Swamp uh, three times and once to Cameroon, where there are reports of dinosaurs still living. Ever since Congo was colonized by Belgium back in 1885, there were reports of dinosaurs still living in that swamp, small ones, 15 or 20 feet long. This article, 1910, New York Herald, talks about a dinosaur still living. 1948, Saturday Evening Post. 1980, uh, Big Game Hunter went there back in the early 1900s and said he saw an animal that could only fit the description of a dinosaur. There could be dinosaurs by Ivan T. Sanderson. Okay? Roy Mackle's been there three times. Then uh, they report dinosaurs called Mopele and Bembe, small ones, still alive in the swamp right now. So I think there's a fairly good amount of evidence that there could be a few stragglers still around. Eugene Thomas, missionary, was there, a friend of mine, he's in Ohio now, retired. He was for 42 years in the swamp as a missionary. He said, oh yeah, I had two pygmies in my church that killed one and ate it. Uh, for sake of time here, since they're giving me the one minute warning, uh, I'll just try a couple of other examples, we've got plenty here. 1925, this animal washed up on the beach in California. That's the head, here's the mouth, there's the eyeball, here's the neck. I talked to the guy who wrote this book, uh, Randall Reinstead, I said, Randall, can I get those pictures? He said, you know, those were in the archives at Berkeley University. I went and got, checked out the pictures, wrote my book. I got so many articles about this saying, wow, write more on this. I went back to get the pictures and they, they, they said, we don't have any pictures like that. And they have no record of them ever having had them. They disappeared. Who knows what happened? 
But the neck on this preacher was 20 feet long. One atheist wrote me a letter and said, Hoban, you're so stupid. Don't you know there was a whale? I wrote back and said, just exactly where is the neck on a whale? The people who examined it, like uh, Mr. Wallace, who was the president of the Natural History Society for British Columbia, he was there, stood there, examined the thing. Here's what he said. My examination of the monster was quite thorough. It had no teeth, its head is large, the neck 20 feet long, the body is weak, and the tail only 3 feet in length from the end of the backbone. With the bill like it possesses, it must have lived on herbage and undoubtedly inhabited a swamp. I would call it a type of plesiosaurus. So I've done an enormous amount of research on dinosaurs that might still be alive. So I think uh, the man and dinosaurs together to a creationist is, is not a problem. If there aren't any alive, it wouldn't bother me. But I think there's good evidence they have lived with man all through history. They were known as dragons through most of history. 1841, we changed names and now call them dinosaurs. Thank you. At the beginning of this debate, I made some statements about what I was going to do in my evolution class. I stand by those. They're the way I've always taught my course. I don't believe I have the power to brainwash my students into abandoning their faith. If I did have that power, well, what I would brainwash them into doing would be my stack of dirty dishes, um, which is more important than I get done uh, than the other alternative. I have... I used to ask questions like this, but for the past three years when I've taught evolution, I simply have not asked students whether they believe it or not. And the reason is that belief in the religious sense, uh, the assuredness of things unseen, and Paul's uh, definition thereof, is simply not the issue in a science class. And I teach evolution in a science class. I do not particularly care whether they accept it or not. I've had people you know, come up to me with the attitude that um, they seem to think that for every 10 people I convert to the cause of evolutionism, I get another piece of free luggage or something like that. Uh, well, I don't. It does not make any difference to me. I have had students come in with very strong religious beliefs. They've shared them uh, with me in some cases. Others have not. Um,